All right, so as I was saying, um, you've added one man here on the right hand side. You've got a net force of 50 newtons. Yeah, that's, you can see this green, and this right represents the force exerted by this one man towards the right. Now when I press this go button, we should expect to see this cart move to the right. Let's see if indeed that's what happens. One, two, three, here we go. And as you can see, the cart starts to move to the right. Okay, let me press pause. All right, and we see that he wins, obviously, okay? All right, now let's do this with two small men. Okay, let's repeat the process, but this time we use two small men. We click on reset all, yeah? We click on all these check boxes, keep them checked so that you can see the values and the sum of all forces. Instead of one man, we move two men. All right? Let's also move one medium man. So now we've got, what's the total force? You can see that the force is now 200 newtons. Yes. And you can see that the net force is also 200 newtons to the right because there's nothing pulling it to the left. All right? Now, when I press go, I want you to compare the speed of motion. Okay, relative to what you saw previously. You saw that the cart moved to the right previously, but see what happens or how fast it goes now. Okay, that's what you want to do now. Hold on a minute, please. There we go. All right. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to press go and watch how fast the cart moves to the right. One, two, three. Here we go. And clearly it's starting to move much faster than before, right? You can hear that clapping sound much earlier. Why is that? You've got a greater force acting and therefore the mass is constant. We haven't changed the mass of the cart. But because now the force acting is 200 newtons, mass remains the same. Second law says acceleration equals net external force by mass. Net external force is increased and therefore acceleration must be greater than in the previous case. Okay? Now let's do that, let's do this again. Reset all, turn these guys back on. Let's move one red man and one blue man. As you can see, the force acting to the left and the both one blue man, big man, I'm sorry, one small blue man and one small red man. Okay, so they both exert a force of 50 newtons. Now, despite the fact that they're exerting forces of 50 newtons each, the net force is still zero. You can see sum of all forces is zero. All right? Now, what should the cart do when I press go? What do you think the cart will do when I press go? It will not move. That's what Kirti says. Anybody else? Okay, Divyangi says it won't move. Okay, all three of you say it won't move. Let's see if you're right. Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. Yeah, five seconds gone. Ten seconds gone. Fifteen seconds gone. And it's not moving. So you guys are clearly right. Okay, that indeed the cart will not move simply because despite this pull towards the left and the right, the, it's, an, it, it's, not an ex, it's not an unbalanced, there's no net external unbalanced force. <coughs> so there is a force, yeah, so the red guy is exerting one force of 50 newtons, the blue guy is exerting towards the left of 50 newtons. But there is no net unbalanced force. They cancel each other out. There are two forces acting on the body which balance each other out. So there's no net unbalanced force and clearly nothing happens. So really it's important to say, that what's the idea here? The idea here is it's not enough to say that there is no force acting, okay? Or you can have a situation where a force does act or forces do act on a body, but the body doesn't move because they balance each other out. That's the first idea. The second idea is that 
it's not enough to apply external forces. They must net, the, they must be unbalanced. The net force must be unbalanced in order to change the state of motion. Is this clear or not clear? Seems very basic, but you'll be surprised how many, how many students get this wrong. Okay, very good. Now let's move to this tab. Okay, same, same experiment, this tab. What are the controls? There are a bunch of controls here and we're going to keep them all checked every time. Okay, so that brings us a speedometer here. We can change the applied force here and we can put a mass on this cart and here's this robot. Yeah, this robot is going to exert whatever force we decide here. This is the pause button. So we can stop and see, you know, just what's going on. We can, we, so that we can analyze what's going on, okay? Um, all right, so here we go. What I'm going to do is this. Also, we assume that there is no friction, all right? We, in this lab, we're gonna assume there's no friction for now, so everything is frictionless. Also, remember that this speedometer here, yeah, only measures speed, which means it's only telling, now since motion can be only to the left or the right, it, plus 5 meters per second and minus 5 meters per second will look the same because this is a speedometer, not a velocity meter, okay? So it will tell you the magnitude of velocity, but you will not know the direction. The direction you have to figure out by looking at the experiment. Is that clear? Okay, so if I press this button, yeah, this is the play pause button. Yeah, so now the experiment is paused and if I press it again, now it's playing, all right? But not, there's no forces, so nothing will happen. So I'm gonna press it and pause it, okay? So this is the paused state, okay? And you can see this arrow, that's the paused state. I'm gonna take this refrigerator of 200 kilos mass and drag it onto this trolley, okay? I'm gonna set the force control to 50 newtons plus 50 newtons which means it should act to the left or the right according to our sign convention right precisely okay so according to our sign convention it should act to the right so when I press enter there we go you can see that the force will now act towards the right all right and that's the force being applied by the robot. You can see that he's actually applying this force. Look at the speed, okay? It's zero as of now because we haven't started the experiment, okay? Now, from the last experiment, if I press this play button, what should happen? What should happen to the refrigerator? Should it move? Should it not move? Which direction should it move? Remember we said there's no friction in this experiment. Okay, Harshad says it will move right. Anybody says it won't move or it will move to the left. It will move to the right. Yeah, it should be fairly obvious. There's no friction, so it should move to the right. That should be the direction of motion. Now, the question really to ask is this. Is the motion going to be uniform or non-uniform? By uniform, we mean constant velocity, non-uniform we mean changing velocity, okay? And we can figure that out whether it's uniform or non-uniform by looking at this speedometer, all right? So in your own minds, I'll give you two seconds to think about what should happen, what should, what should you see on the speedometer, all right? Think about it, five seconds, and let's see if once I press the play button, will you get what you expect? Let's take a look at that. All right, here we go. One, please observe the speedometer, okay? That's important. Ob it's obvious that the direction is to the right. We've already established that. What we need to now figure out is that is the motion going to be uniform motion or non-uniform motion? That's our objective. Here we go. Observe the speedometer.
okay it's very slow but hopefully you should start to see what's happening let's give it a little bit of time see observe what's happening I've deliberately set the force to a low value so that you can see that it's a very slow, steady ax uh, change in motion that's occurring. But please keep observing the speedometer. It's clear that it's moving to the right now. It should be quite clear. But at what speed? Is it constant speed? Is it increasing speed? What, 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 what is it? Uniform velocity or uniform motion or non-uniform motion? That's really what we need to figure out. Okay, let me pause it there. So what did you think? Look at the reading of the speedometer now. When it started, it was zero. And slowly it increased to about somewhere between the second and the third notch. I'm sorry. For, uh, uh, yeah, the second and the third notch. So is this uniform motion or non-uniform motion? So as Harshad's pointed out, the velocity is an increasing velocity. Yeah? So it's clear that it's non-uniform motion. It's not constant velocity. Okay? Because the speed keeps on increasing. Also, which side is the object moving? The velocity is increasing towards the right, yeah? Which means it's accelerating towards the right. Therefore, you can see that the acceleration also acts in the same direction as the force. Is this clear or not clear? Yeah, these are the two points that you need to take away from here. That acceleration acts in the direction of force and external unbalanced force produces acceleration. Acceleration means non-uniform motion. Okay? And that's what we see happening. Okay, let me just reset everything and I press reset all to do that. Let me check all these boxes again. Now, instead of the refrigerator, I'm going to put this 50 kilogram mass. Okay? I'm going to use the same force again as I did before, which is again still plus 50 Newtons. Now I want you to think about what kind of motion will you observe. Again you need to look at the speedometer. Keep looking at the speedometer. Okay? What kind of motion will you observe? Will it be, which direction will it be in? Will it be faster than the previous case or slower than the previous? Will the acceleration be greater or lesser? Will this, will it be uniform, non-uniform? Will it be constant velocity? What will happen? I want you to think about that. Yeah, take, take, take 15, 20 seconds to think about that. Oops, I'm sorry about that. Sorry about that. Oh, sorry. I forgot to press play. Let's reset it. And you can see it's already moving. So I'm just going to restart it. 50 kilograms, 50 newton. Let me pause it. It's paused. 50 kilograms again. And we are going to try and see how long it takes this time for the speed to get up to about what it did last time. Okay, and is it faster or is it slower? I've pressed play and as you can see the speed has started to increase and it's fairly clear that the speed is increasing at a much faster rate than earlier, right? Last time it took an eternity to get up, get somewhere between the uh, second and third black mark. This time 
about 15 seconds and we are there. There, we are there already. Okay, so it should be fairly clear. So what, 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 what do you take away from this? What, what do you observe from this? What can you take away from this? Do we agree that the acceleration is much faster in this case, yes or no? Yes, it is. It is significantly faster. And why is that? The force applied is the same, so why are we getting more acceleration? Why is it, why is it seeming to accelerate faster? Acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. Exactly. According to second law, yeah, A equals F by M. In the first case, F was 50 newtons. M was 200 kilograms. In this case, F is 50 newtons, but M is only 50 kilograms. And therefore, the A value produced is going to be that much higher. Yeah, and therefore, because acceleration is higher, remember V equals U plus AT. Yeah, U is the starting speed, which is zero. A is the acceleration, V is the final speed. V, the final speed is the same in both cases, somewhere between the second and the third. So really, you can say that A times T is a constant. If A increases, then T decreases. And therefore, you get a lower time in this case as compared to the previous case. Is this clear or is this not clear? Okay, very good. Yeah, so this may seem basic now, but again, like I said, it's important to make sure you understand all these ideas because they can get quite confusing at a later stage. Oops, 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 I'm sorry, give me a moment. What happened here? All right, there we are. Okay, so that's the next important idea that we take away, that mass and force both interact together to land up getting you what the acceleration is. All right, now here's what I'm going to do. Note the speed. It's already between the second and the third notch. Okay, halfway between that. Okay, now the experiment is paused. I'm going to set this force control back to zero. Okay, so the force is now back to zero. Remember, it's already moving with some speed. I've just stopped, I've just paused it. It doesn't mean that the object is not moving. It is moving, but I've just paused it so we can analyze it. Okay? So now there's no force acting on it, but there is a initial but there is some speed that it already has. It's moving towards the right. The robot is no longer pushing it. Okay, when it has this speed. Now no external unbalanced force is therefore acting. Do we agree with that? Once the speed has reached this point and we set the force to zero there is no external unbalanced force. Do we agree? Okay, so now if I unpause or if I play this experiment, I want you to think about what should happen now. Use your concepts of Newton's laws, what if first law, second law, third law, whatever you have to use. Yeah? I want you to use those concepts and think about what will happen when I press play. Will it keep moving to the right? Will it stop? Will it, um, will it go on accelerating? What will happen? Yeah? This is what I want you to think about. And feel free to feel free to type your conclusions. Yeah, no. Okay, Kirti says it will move to the right with constant velocity. Harshad says it will come to a halt. Okay, let's see what happens. Here we go. One, two, three. Please keep observing the speed meter.
it's clear that it's moving to the right, no doubt about that, but at what speed is the velocity changing? Let's play it for maybe a minute and see what happens. Okay, so that, that's about enough. So what did we see? What did we see? Does it come to rest? Does its velocity increase? Does its velocity decrease? Does it accelerate? Does it decelerate? What happens to it? Does it keep moving with the same velocity? What happens? What did you observe? It is moving at constant speed. Yeah? So it's pretty much as Kirti predicted, that it would move to the right at constant speed. Now my question to you is, why is that? You can very simply, in three words, you should be able to answer this question. Why does this occur? There's no force acting on it, but it's moving at the same velocity. It's moving at constant velocity. It seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? No force is acting anymore but it's still moving at constant velocity. Why is that? Okay, private chat from here, please. Oh dear, private chat is a little painful for me. But anyway, it doesn't really matter since you all can see my screen. So public chat is fine, I'm sorry. You can keep it public chat. No need to do private chat only is going to waste my time. Harshad, can I ask you to please retype in private chat, in public chat, sorry. Since you all can see each other's answers, it doesn't really matter. Yes, Kirti, Divyangi, why is it moving at constant speed, despite no force acting? Okay, Kirti, you're telling me an application of what? Which law? Because of inertia. Yes, Harshad, those are three words, which is very good. But <laughs> I was really looking for Newton's first law. Yeah? According to Newton's first law, a body, at body in a particular state of motion continues to remain in that state of motion if no external unbalanced force acts on it. So in this case... We had a situation where there was already a starting velocity, there was no external unbalanced force, and therefore, as a result, it kept on moving at constant velocity. This is exactly what Newton's first law says. Is this clear or not clear? Okay, Harshal, hopefully that's changed your understanding a little bit. Okay? All right, you're going to have to give me exactly 10 seconds. I'll just be back, yeah? Or a minute, rather. I'll just be back. Daddy, can you just come for the puja? Mm All right, sorry about that. Hopefully that's clear as to why this continues to stay in motion. Yeah. <clears throat> now let's see, let's start again. Or rather now I'm going to set the force control now to minus 50 Newtons. Okay. And you can see that our good friend, the robot is back pushing towards the left. 
However, there is an initial velocity which is towards, remember the initial velocity is right now towards the right. Okay, you should remember that. Now think about what will happen when I press play. Okay, what will happen when I press play? Will we get constant speed? Will the body start moving to the left instead of the right? What should start to happen? Think about that. And I'd like you to think about it in two time frames. What will happen immediately and what will happen after some time passes? Yeah, I want you to think about those two cases. When I press the play button again, what should happen to the motion? Okay, the speed will first increase, decrease, then increase. This is what Harshad says. Anybody else? <clears throat> Anyone else? Divyangi, Kirti. Any thoughts on what will happen initially and then later? Okay, nobody else wants to hazard a guess. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm going to unpause it and let's see what happens. Keep watching the speedometer. All right? Okay, both of you seem to have the same answer. Let's see what happens. Here we go. One, two, three. So still moving towards the right, but speed is falling, as we can see here. Yeah, still moving towards the right, speed still falling, still falling, still falling, comes to zero, now it's starting to increase but the motion has changed from right to left. Yeah, now increasing, but motion is now towards the left instead of the right. And as we can see, still continues to increase. All right, let me pause this. So why is this happening? Yeah, this should be fairly obvious. Remember we did an example like this in the motion lab where the initial velocity was towards the right. We applied an acceleration to the left and we saw exactly this kind of situation, right? Exactly this situation. So essentially if you use the idea V equals U plus AT and let me just open up a document one moment. All right, here's our whiteboard. We can use this whiteboard. So if we use the idea of V equals U plus AT, let's put some numbers to this, yeah? Let's say initial velocity was two meters per second to the right, so that means that's a plus two meters per second. Let's say acceleration produced by the force acting to the left is minus 0 0.5 meters per second, okay? Let's see what happens. Let's plot. Yeah, so there's time and here's velocity. Let's see what happens. At time t equal to 0, what's the velocity? 2. Yeah, at time t equal to 1 second, what's the velocity? 1.5. At t equal to 2, velocity becomes 1. At t equal to 3, velocity becomes 0 0.5. At t equal to 4,
velocity becomes zero, which means it's come to rest. At t equal to five, if you put in numbers into v equal to u plus at with these settings, you'll see that the velocity now becomes minus 0 0.5. At six, it becomes minus one. At seven, it becomes minus 1.5. At eight, it becomes minus two, and so on and so forth. So clearly, we would expect the speed to initiate. Remember, the speedometer doesn't tell you direction, only magnitude. So you'd expect the speed to initially drop, yeah, and then to start increasing in the left-hand side direction as this negative sign shows. Okay, but the speedometer will just show um, what's happening in just one direction. All right, so that should be pretty straightforward. Let me just say, straighten this out a little bit. So we can use this again, and there we go. Is this clear, what, what just happened? OK, very good. Let's move on. So we now move to the next experiment. And now we're going to use friction, OK? So this is the controls are the same as earlier, except that we now have an additional control for friction over here, which you should be able to see now. So now I'm going to set all the forces to 0. I'm sorry, I'm going to check all these boxes. And the speedometer is back. I'm going to set the friction to none, OK? I'm going to press the pause button. And I'm also going to take this 50 kg mass like I did last time. OK? This time there's no trolley. You're just rubbing it on the floor. And if now it's, you can see it's very icy, right? And ice means there's no friction or very little, fr in this case, zero friction. OK, if I increase the friction, see it becomes wood or concrete or something. And this becomes a pretty rough surface, as you can see. And therefore, you'd expect friction to increase, yeah? So I'm setting friction to zero initially to start with. So we've got this nice icy kind of um, surface. I'm going to set this to 50 newtons. OK? And I've pressed pause. I press enter. And here we go. So again, the robot's going to, and ex going to exert a force of 50 newtons to the right. The net force acting is 50 newtons to the right. What should happen? OK? Think about what will happen when I play this. This is no different from the previous case. So really, we should, the body should accelerate exactly as it did in the previous case. Right? Let's see if that happens. Here we go. I'm going to press play. One, two, three. There we go. Watch the speed meter and see what happens. As you can see, the speed is increasing. Yeah? You can see that here. And the body is moving towards the right. It's a little less obvious in this case. But you can see clearly that the speed is increasing, which means the body is moving in the direction of the force, which is towards the right. OK? So let's wait till it gets to sort of two notches on the speedometer. And then we'll press pause. OK, there we go. All right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this down to back to 0. I've pressed pause. I want to set the force to 0, which means that the robot stops applying force. <coughs> what will happen if I press play now? If I restart and press play, what should happen? What should happen to the box? It continues to move with the same speed. OK, let's see if that's the case. Here we go. One, two, three. There we go. As you can see, let's look at the speedometer. It doesn't change. It stays constant. 
okay no force acting on the box no friction therefore it continues to move to the right with constant velocity exactly the same situation as earlier no change right now here's what we're going to do right I'm going to just reset everything here we go I'm going to click on all these boxes now what do I do I'm going to make sure that this friction bar is set at the default value which is kind of halfway okay roughly halfway now I'm going to take the 50 kg mass again bring it back here now I am not pressing pause in this case okay and I'm just without pressing pause I'm going to put in 50 kgs when the robot and when I press enter the robot should start pushing okay also note that the starting speed is zero here we go ah oh, sorry okay never mind never mind I've set the force at 50 newtons is anything happening is the speed increasing okay so you can see look at the forces there is a force of 50 newtons that the robot is pushing with but there is also a frictional force of 50 newtons these two cancel out the net force is zero and therefore the object does not move is this clear what's going on in this case Note that I haven't pressed pause, yeah? You can see that there is a, there's no arrow here. If there was an arrow here, that means it's paused. It's not paused, it's playing, okay? Okay, now, what will happen if I change this to 20 Newtons? Think about what will happen. What will happen when I change this to 20 Newtons? anybody nothing will happen uh, I'll, it still won't move okay what will happen to the frictional force we can see here that applied force is 50 newtons Frictional force is 50 newtons. Speed is zero. If I change this to 20 newtons now, what will be the frictional force? You all are saying it won't move. What does that mean? What does the frictional force have to become for it to not move? You're saying it will be 20 newtons. Yes, it will. So my prediction, it will be minus 20 newtons. I guess you all want to say the same thing but I'm just being a little more precise here we go I set it to 20 newtons so you can see external applied force is reduced to 20 friction has reduced to 20 they balance each other out net force is zero and as you can see the speed still does not change it stays where it was what will happen if I change it to 40 newtons if I change this to now to 40 newtons what will happen What will happen to the frictional force and the net force? Okay, Harshad says now friction will be 40 Newtons. What will be 40 Newtons? Friction or net force, Harshad? Okay, Kirti says friction becomes minus 40 and it still doesn't move, okay. That's an accurate or a complete answer. Let's see whether it's accurate or not. Okay, here we go. Let's try. I've put in 20 Newtons. I press enter. And, oops, sorry, 40 Newtons. There we go. Enter. And now external force is 40 Newtons. Frictional force has now adjusted to become 40 Newtons. Speed is still zero. What do we take away from all this? Can we see that 
that the force of static friction is a variable force. Can you see this? Is this idea clear? That at low values, it is a variable force, okay? So what most students land up assuming is that static friction is equal to new static times normal force. That's not true. That's only the for maximum static force of friction. Okay, but if the external applied force is less than the maximum static force of friction, then the frictional force matches what is the applied external force. Yeah, is this point clear or no? Okay, so hopefully that's cleared up one important point. Now, so the question now is, what is the maximum static force of friction in this case? Let's figure it out by trial and error, okay? It wasn't 50, so let me just put 75, okay? And see whether I start to, what happens to frictional force? Nope. Yeah, I have external force is 75. Friction is 75 newtons. So clearly 75 is less than the maximum, 75 newtons is less than the force of, uh, than the maximum force of static friction. So let me make it 100 and see whether what, what happens if I make it 100. No. Nope. Yeah, you can see that this, the frictional force is still adjusting. Okay? And clearly it means that the maximum static force of friction must be greater than 100 newtons. So let me try 120 newtons. Nope, you can see that the frictional force is adjusted again, which means that the maximum force of static friction is a value greater than 120 newtons also. Let me just try 125 newtons, see what happens. Nope, not even 125 newtons. All right. How about 130? Let's try 130 newtons. Just trial and error stuff. Okay. There we go. Now you can see that the external applied force is 130 newtons. Frictional force is 125 newtons. There is a net external force of 5 newtons, which means that the static force cannot increase beyond 125 newtons. And therefore, that must be the maximum value of static frictional force. Is this clear? You, it is variable up to a maximum point, but not beyond that point. So if the external force exceeds that maximum force of static friction, friction cannot adjust, static friction cannot adjust beyond that point. Okay? So now, let's say I increase this to, now you can see over here that because of this net force, there is now a net acceleration and velocity started to slowly increase. To make that obvious, let me just increase this number to say some big number. Yeah. Oops, what happened here? Oops. I'm sorry. Let me put in 200 newtons. There we go, okay? Now there's an external force of 75 newtons. And you can now see that, let me press play, and you should start seeing this velocity number increase quite rapidly because of this net force of 75 newtons, which is composed of 200 newtons external applied force, 125 newtons maximum frictional force. Now in this case, the assumption here is that static and kinetic friction are the same and therefore uh, our coefficients of static and kinetic friction are the same and therefore despite the fact that the object has now started moving the frictional force doesn't change okay that is the implied assumption over here but you can see that the speed is increasing quite rapidly okay all right now let's see um, now, let's see what happens, okay? What I'm going to do now is I'm going, I've pressed pause, and now I'm going to set this to zero, external force to zero. If I press play, what will happen? 
what will happen to the velocity of this body again I want to know in the short term and in the long term what will happen I want you to think about this look at the free body diagram look at the free body diagram okay Harsha, that's not a complete answer. I want to know what's going to happen in the short term, what's going to happen in the long term. You've given me what will happen in the short term. You're saying speed will decrease. Fine, we all agree, right? Because the initial motion is towards the right. There is frictional force acting to the left. There's no force acting to the right, which means that the net unbalanced force is 125 newtons to the left. Therefore, speed will decrease. We all agree with what happens in the short term what will happen in the long term think think people think it will come to rest then what will happen there is an external unbalanced force right acting to the left will it keep moving to the left now will it start moving to the left like we like it did in the previous case the same question why why won't it start moving to the left like the, in the left in the previous case there was a net unbalanced force of 50 newtons to the left but in that case it stopped and started moving to the left why? in this case again we've got a 125 newton unbalanced force to the left but yet you're saying that it will not it'll come to a rest and it'll come to rest and not move to the left why is that I'm sorry, Kirti, I don't understand. If 125 newtons of frictional force acts to the left-hand side, once it comes to rest, why will it not keep moving to the left? In the previous case, you had the same thing. You had 50 newtons to the left, and it came to rest, and it started to move to the left, isn't it? You all only said that. So I'm showing, we've got almost an identical free body diagram, or it, except for the value, it's everything is the same. But yet you're saying that it'll come to, come to zero. Frictional force will decrease as speed decreases. No, Kirti, the red is the frictional force. Harshad, why does frictional force decrease? Where does it say that speed and frictional force are related? Which equation have you studied that relates speed to frictional force? Think, people think. That's what this is about. It's about thinking. Okay, let me give you a hint. You guys are right. It will come to rest and stay at rest. Why? Okay, so total confusion, right? Okay, it's important to get into the detail. Let's try and answer that question. The body right now has a velocity to the right. We can see friction acting. What kind of friction is this? Is this static friction? Is this kinetic friction? Kinetic friction, okay? Now, is kinetic friction a variable force or a static force? Does it, does it change its magnitude or does it stay constant? As long as the body is moving, does its value change or does it stay constant? OK, 
confused, everyone's confused. What is kinetic friction? Force of kinetic friction is mu k times normal force. Yes or no? And therefore, does it change as long as the body is in motion? It's always mu k times n. The only condition is that the body has to be in motion. So it's a constant force as long as the body is in motion. Therefore, this force will remain 125 newtons as long as the body is in motion. The instant it comes to rest, at the very instant it comes to rest, will kinetic friction act? No, because now you'll have static friction acting. Where, what, what is the static friction when there's no external unbalanced force? What will static friction be? Zero. What will the net force be when it comes to rest? Zero. And therefore, will it move once it comes to rest if the net force after that becomes zero? No, it won't. And that's the reason it won't move. Okay? So you've got to be very clear about what's acting. Is it static friction? Is it kinetic friction? When does it act? What is the maximum value? See, a lot of little, little ideas, yeah? So let's verify what we were just saying. There is an initial velocity to the right. Therefore, this kinetic friction of 125 newtons is acting. And this will, the robot has stopped pushing, which means that this force, frictional force, is stopping its retarding motion, or its negative acceleration, which means that the velocity should fall to zero, but it should stay zero once it comes to zero. And this force, frictional force, should also disappear when the velocity of the, of the object comes to zero. Are we agreed on these conclusions or on our expectations for what we should see? Are we agreed? Okay, so let's see if this is indeed what happens. So I'm pressing play. Observe what happens to the speedometer. When it comes to zero, observe what happens to the frictional force and the net force, and then what happens to the speed after that. Here we go. Okay, so you, guys, you see it's moving. You can see that its velocity is dropping. Yeah, the frictional force is staying constant because it's kinetic friction and that always stays constant as long as there is motion. You can see that's what is happening. Friction, I'm sorry, speed continues to fall. It's about to come to rest. When it comes to rest, note what happens to friction. Did you see that? The instant it came to rest, kinetic friction went away, static friction began to act. Static friction is zero because it balances, it's up to a maximum value, it balances out net external force. There is no applied force, so static frictional force must also be zero, and therefore net forces are zero. The body stays at rest. Is this, isn't this exactly what we expected from our analysis? Okay, very good. I'm um, going to open up a new lab. All right, we're going to use this lab and we are going to set it to this friction tab. This is the forces and motion lab. All right, the various controls are here. This is the FBD control. This shows you the free body diagram over here. If you press it, if you check it, this is the display control and we want to always see the sum of forces. We don't really care about this. This is the starting position of the object and you can see it's minus six meters, yeah, which means it's to the left hand side of zero. That's the starting uh, position. This is our force control. This is, we can change static and kinetic friction, but we leave it at these values, okay? This is the object mass, so whatever this object is, that's the mass of the object. And this is gravity, if we choose to adjust it. 
okay the acceleration due to gravity and this is our familiar play pause button these are the way which just pauses them pauses it so we can investigate what's happening okay that's really what we're going to do so now let's start so I've, I've checked everything let me set the starting position as minus eight meters all right so that's our starting position uh, in the display control all boxes are checked as you can see both boxes are checked I've set these at minus at uh, friction, static friction at, as 0.5, kinetic friction as 0.3, and I'm setting acceleration due to gravity as 10 to make my calculations easy. Okay. Now the crate is at rest, as you can see. Observe the free body diagram. There's the mass or the weight acting downwards. That's Fg, and Fn is the normal force due to contact with the Earth. Okay, those are the only two forces acting. Let's calculate what Fg is. You can see that the mass is 100 kilograms. Yeah, G is 10 meters per second. Therefore, Fg will be 100 times 10, which is 1,000 newtons. Because these forces are balanced, yeah, it's not this crate is not moving up and down. So therefore, Fn must cancel Fg. We've just calculated Fg as 1,000 newtons. Therefore, Fn must also be 1,000 newtons. Look at the force of kinetic friction. I'm sorry, the coefficient of kinetic friction. What should the maximum force of static friction be? You know that normal force is 1,000 newtons. You know that mu s is 0.5. What should the maximum force of static friction be? Five hundred newtons. How did you get that, Kirti? Now, rest of you, how, how, some attempt. Okay, so you're right, Kirti. It's mu s times n or f n normal force. Normal force is 1000, mu s is 0 0.5, therefore the maximum static force of friction should be 500 newtons. Now I'm going to set the force control. And I'm going to apply 100 newtons of force. I want you to think about what the FBD will look like. More specifically, what will be the force of static friction that comes up on the FBD if I apply a force of 100 newtons. What will be frictional force if I apply a force of 100 newtons, if the robot applies a force of 100 newtons? Frictional force will be minus 100 newtons. Exactly. So let's see if that what that's what happens. Put it to 100 newtons. There we go. Here's our new FPD, and you can see that this is our frictional. This is our applied force. This is our frictional force, and it looks the size of the arrows is about the same. We can verify whether anything happens or not if we press play. Yeah. Once we press play. If these two forces balance each other, then there should be no motion. Okay, here we go. I've pressed play. And as you can see, the position stays at minus 8. Yeah, it doesn't change from here at all. As you can see, it's more, you know, the it's playing. But the object is not moving because the horizontal forces are balanced. Frictional force equals external applied force. Okay, let me pause that. Is this clear? What's going on?
Okay, now if I do 200, it should be the same, right? Because the force of static friction should be variable up to 500 newtons. Okay, so at 200, let's press play again. And you can see that these arrows again roughly are the same size. Let me just move this. Oops, 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 what happened here? Sorry about that. I did something. Okay, that's our free body diagram. Set acceleration to 10. Our mass is 100 and force is 200 newtons, yeah? That's our free body diagram. Nothing happens as we saw, yeah? Free body diagram, everything cancels out. If I make it 400 newtons, again, it should be variable, force of static friction. There we go. External force is increased. Force of static friction has increased because it's a variable force. Okay? Let me make it 600 newtons. What will happen when I make it 600 newtons? Any thoughts? It will move to the right. What else will happen? I want you to think about what else will happen. Yes, it will start moving to the right. But what else will happen? I want you to think about that. Okay, so let me just make this 500 newtons, yeah? Because we know that there's 500 newtons. So look at this arrow. Look at the size of this frictional force arrow. So that's 500 newtons. Okay? If I make the external applied force 600 newtons, you say it will start moving to the right. Okay? Can you tell me what will be the net effective force acting on the crate? Once, let's say I make the external force 600 newtons, what will be the net effective force acting on the right? that will accelerate the uh, crate. Sorry, hold on a minute, please. We are off. Kali Okay, I'm sorry, we are back. Here we go. Okay, all of you say it, the net force will be 100 newtons towards the right. I'm saying all of you are wrong. All of you are wrong. Why is that? Please think about what happened in the last case. When the object in the previous case, when the object came to rest, what happened to frictional force? Now when the object starts from rest, what will happen to frictional force? I'm giving you lots of hints. Any thoughts? Think, think people, think. Use the same idea as the previous lab. Think about what will happen. Okay, Kirti, you're on the right track. Kinetic friction starts acting. What is the force of kinetic friction? Can you compute that? from the data you can see. We already said that the normal force is going to be 1000 newtons. For the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.3. So now you've calculated the, the force of kinetic friction as 300 newtons. Force, external applied force, I'm just going to change it to 600 newtons. What will be the net applied force to the right? If kinetic friction, the body just starts moving, okay? Just about starts moving. 
the minute it just starts moving its velocity is 0.0000000000001 meters per second so basically it means it's pretty much at rest but just is about to move St static friction stops acting kinetic friction takes over what will be the so you've got an external force of 600 newtons and you've got kinetic force of minus 300 newtons what will be the net force on the crate how 200 harsha external force is 600 newtons 600 newtons to the right kinetic friction is 300 newtons to the left so what will be the net force 300 newtons to the right precisely yeah so now I'm going to press play and I want you to watch this arrow very carefully this when I say 3 or 3 to 1 go I'll say 3 to 1 go okay let's use that when I say go I want you to see what happens to this arrow this red arrow okay so let me just make it 600 newtons we are still paused so 600 newtons so you've seen that this is increased but the kinetic forces remain the same but as it is now still 500 newtons acting backwards okay that's what's happening right now it's 500 newtons acting backwards the minute I press this play button I want you to observe what happens to this red frictional force okay please observe three two one go okay let me pause it did you see that this arrow size fell off did you see that from 500 newtons it became 300 newtons okay and that's what happens when motion just begins static friction stops to act and kinetic friction takes over kinetic friction is generally lower than static friction yeah we then not lower than static friction it's lower than maximum force of static friction why because static friction is a variable force okay and therefore that's why you got this change in the size of this arrow because at 500 newtons of external applied force maximum static friction was acting okay which was 500 newtons now when I change the external applied force to 600 that was enough to get it to start moving but the minute it started moving static friction stopped acting kinetic friction started acting kinetic friction is constant equal to 0.3 times the normal force which is 1000 and therefore uh, this arrow becomes smaller now it should be clear that once it started moving I can actually reduce this external force and the body will still keep moving so I can reduce this to 400 newtons okay can you see that despite reducing that in initially I needed 600 newtons to get it started yeah something more than 500 to get it started but once it started moving I can make do by pushing a smaller amount by pushing us using a smaller force can you see that 400 is much less than when I when it was static and I applied for 400 newtons nothing happened but now it's kinetic it started moving so what's applying is kinetic friction and therefore I need to only uh, even 400 newtons is enough to keep it moving do we agree or no that when I press play again the object should still continue to move to the right do we agree with this yes no maybe Harshad okay so let's see if indeed that's what happens here we go one two three go and as you can see it still continues to move to the right despite the fact that the applied force now is lower than what we started out as is this clear what is happening here this switch over from static to kinetic friction 
the idea that kinetic friction itself is variable up, depends on the external applied force. It's variable up to a maximum value. Yeah? Any questions on today's lab? That brings me to the end of today's lab. Any questions? <laughs>